you take a look at a lot of the fiction, particularly serialized fiction, so one could bring up, for example, the Marvel comic series that have now been made into film. And if one looks a little bit further back, one could take a look at the Godzilla movies that came out of Japanese studios during the middle part of the 1960s that move away from the original early 1950s film, which was an exceedingly film noir epic, I think, that was really an allegory, a morality play about science misused the nuclear terror and the fact that when we disturb nature in ways that we think we know, we may not necessarily know what we're doing. And then will we take responsibility for fixing that? And very often the cure can be just as disastrous as the thing that we evoke. And are we willing to take responsibility for that? It was a brilliantly done movie, and I think it's a great morality play. But if you even look at the Godzilla series, the idea that here was this thing that was not necessarily evil per se, but it was in fact nature to an extent of nature we had not yet seen because of our own meddlings with nature, that human nature interacting with nature needs to then be responsible for the changes in nature. You even hear these debates today about whether or not humans may be responsible for climate change, etc. And I think that taking responsibility certainly needs to be part of human nature as homo sapiens. And these types of interactions have been perdurable. Humans are tool users. We change our environment. And more and more, the environment we're changing is our environment, our internal environment, ourselves. We're not just building tools to make us more adaptable across a range of environments. We're building a range of possible physiological capabilities to make us more adaptable, if not more functional, viable, and function in different ways in the environments we have. But what's interesting is if you look at these films, if you look at the Godzilla films, if you look at the Marvel films, there's a common theme. The thing that was created that perhaps early on was depicted to be as something that might be devastating and disastrous, we can still harness. We can still rope in. We can still rein in. And underneath it, there's still the idea that, well, it can still do the good. And I think that there's an underlying hope that goes along with that, that, that sort of says that the spark of humanity is such that even if, in fact, we perturb the natural world based upon our own curiosity, very often, if we regenerate that humility, if we, we put away that hubris, and we recognize that there's that spark of humanity in there, can we then harness that thing that could be destructive back for the good? And I think that's a nice interplay to say that these things that can give us these utopian possibilities, the exact same things, if they are used in different ways, or if, in fact, they affect different ends, can be rather dystopian. So I think there's that interesting dance that in some cases were intentionally put into the films, and for others, I think, really just wanted to express some continuity of the character so that they would be a little more popular and not be seen as quite so dark, and wouldn't force us to look in the mirror and think, ooh, I don't know whether or not what we're doing is good or right, and leave us somewhat upset and perturbed.